Welcome back to CFO Weekly, where we're talking with financial leaders about how to build efficiency in their teams, create time for strategy, and ultimately get results with your host, Megan Weiss. Let's jump right in. Today, my guest is Tony Tiscornia. Tony is the CFO of Coupa and oversees the company's finance and investor relations teams. Tony has been with Coupa since 2012 in various progressive leadership positions, including having served as chief accounting officer and VP of finance leading up to his appointment as CFO. During his tenure, Tony has helped oversee the company's IPO in 2016, secondary offering in 2017, three convertible debt offerings, more than a dozen acquisitions, and overall rapid business growth and global expansion. After starting his career in public accounting with KPMG, Tony held various finance positions at the Clorox Company, Chiron Corporation, Robert Half, Blade Network Technologies, and Sora. At Blade, he also played an integral role in the company's IPO readiness efforts followed by the eventual sale of the company to IBM. Tony earned a BS in managerial economics from UC Davis and is a California CPA. Tony, thank you so much for being my guest today. Thanks, Megan. It's great to be here. Yeah, today we're going to be learning about you and Coupa Software and getting some tips for becoming more effective and preparing for growth. So I'm looking forward to learning from you and let's get started. Sounds great. First of all, and as always, let's start with you and your story and how it is that you got to where you are today. Sure. Well, uh, back when I was in college um, at UC Davis uh, near Sacramento here in California, I took an internship with KPMG, which is a a public accounting firm that many people are familiar with. Um, And that was uh, doing various things, taxes, audits, and I really, uh, I, I didn't know which direction I was going to go necessarily uh, leaving college. And this was about halfway through, but I really enjoyed it. Um, you know, on the audit side, I was able to see a lot of different businesses and how they run, meet, meet people within those businesses. And I found it very interesting and informative. And so lo and behold, I kind of followed that path. And, uh, you know, I started my career post-college in KPMG, which is, which is a big four public accounting firm. And, you know, like I said, there's so many different companies that you you look at their financial statements, you meet with their leaders. It really exposed me to how different companies run operationally, uh, how important it is to have visibility and control in all aspects of your business. So you kind of have the agility you need to optimize the performance of your business. And, and every company was was different. So that was an exciting place for me to start. Uh, you know, subsequent to that, I held various roles, um, you know, at Clorox Company, Chiron, Robert Half, Blade Network Technologies, um, and Sora. And and then I came to Coupa almost a decade ago. Uh, and so I've been here, like I mentioned, for almost about 10 years, um, supporting the company's growth uh, globally over time. We had an IPO in 2016. I came here in 2012. Um, and we've done more than a dozen acquisitions. We've done three convertible uh, notes. We did a secondary offering. Um, and so it's been just an incredible experience over the last decade here at Coupa. And all in all, I guess that adds up to, across those different companies, more than 20 years of experience in in finance and corporate finance. So, um, yeah, I, I think that public accounting is a great place to start a career. But what made you decide to be an accountant to begin with? Yeah, I think, uh, you know, the fun side of it is there was always something uh, exciting for me about balancing things out, right? Having things organized, uh, financial statements, balance sheet reconciliations. That was at the very infancy of it. I think uh, that's what what drew me to accounting. The second thing about it was it was I I don't want to say social, but from a professional perspective, you know, I got to meet so many different people at different businesses. Um, I was really soaking it up like a sponge, learning about how these businesses ran themselves, different personalities, different styles of leadership. Um, you know, and and I, I just felt like it was an incredible way to to start a career. I think as time went on, um, you know, I I focus a lot of my career on accounting, but you know, going back six, seven years here at Coupa, I really got involved on the investor relations side even before we were public. Um, really, the strategic aspects of running a business, investing in a business, um, became 
my primary kind of focus or interest, if you will. Um, so I began, you know, like I said, six, seven years ago, uh, training to at some point become a CFO. And, and uh, the CFO at the time, Todd Ford, uh, was very instrumental in, in helping a- along with Rob, our CEO and others, uh, helping me kind of learn, get exposure so that I could aspire to be CFO here at Coupa someday. And now, you know, I get the benefit of having that accounting background, which I think is a, a really strong foundation for a CFO, um, plus all the investor relations and FP&A experience that I've gained in the, over the past decade here at Coupa. Uh, it's really all come together and, and it's very exciting for me. And let's talk about Coupa software. What is it exactly that, that you do? Yeah, so, so the way I like to explain it so that it's easy, somewhat easy for folks to understand you know, we look at enterprise software as having four kind of large verticals. One of them is the ERP, which of course we're all very familiar with, right? Um, the second is CRM, which Salesforce is clearly the market leader there. It's, it's all about the top line and uh, managing your sales. A, a third one would be HCM and human capital management, where you see Workdays and ADPs and, and many others. Um, for for managing your most important asset, which is your people, right? And then the the fourth one is what I would call the rest of your P and L. We've already covered off on revenue and on payroll, right? But what about all of, all of your spending of money for your suppliers? All the things that flow into your operating expenses and your margin expenses that ultimately impact your your earnings, right? And that is uh, supplier spend, and so. You know what? What we call that is business spend management. We Coupa is an enterprise solution that manages all of your business spend. Our platform helps companies do that via procurement, strategic sourcing, supply chain design and planning, accounts payable automation, uh, payments, treasury management, supplier risk management, and and travel and expense management. So it's really a a broad spectrum, a, a platform, a true platform to help you manage all of the business spending that that happens in your company. And it's really valuable for CFOs. We have many CFO advocates because we provide a consolidated view of of all their business spending. Um, We help CFOs improve financial predictability, profitability, and really their their business performance overall. And just curious, is it a product that can just basically come off the shelf or does it need a lot of customization? No, so we, we don't customize we're we're a saas solution uh where you know there's one primary line of code for our solution what we do is configuration right so you know many many of us in the financial space have war stories or horror stories <laughs> about <laughs> large expensive you know on prem erp implementations um certainly a, a coupe implementation is, is nothing like that but it's definitely not a an off the shelf try out a few users, kind of land and expand. You know, we we come in and when we partner with a new customer, um, typically and sometimes in a matter of weeks for a you know a mid market sized customer, or maybe six to nine months in some cases a year for a large enterprise customer, we're able to get that customer up and running, uh, do all the configuration they need, make all the connections to their ERP and their HCM systems and and other systems that are needed. So. It's a it's an enterprise software solution that requires implementation, but we've been able to to mathematically uh, offer a very clear path to ROI break even for customers that invest in Coupa, and that's one of our biggest calling cards when we when we sell Coupa to customers. Yeah, I was going to ask what differentiates you guys from your competitors. Yeah, I mean, I, I would talk about our vision areas, right? So Coupa. Uh, has a, there are a few different stories out there about what the what the name where the name came from back in 2006 when the company was founded. Some of them are kind of fun and entertaining, but the way we look at it is, you know, each letter in Coupa stands for one of our key vision areas that differentiates us. Um, the C is comprehensive. I just rattled off a, a whole list of areas that we cover. You know, when it comes to business spend, Coupa is a truly comprehensive platform, and and I think you'd find it's the only one. At that level on the market, um, the O is for open, right? We have very open uh, community within Coupa. We have tons of data. There's a lot of uh, joint sourcing events and sharing across Coupa. We connect to other platforms, so it's a very open environment. 
You know, the U in Coupa is probably one of the most important ones. Many of us have used systems that are very difficult to use, challenging, um, cumbersome, really um, old, right? There's a lot of manual work that happens. There's a lot of customization and fixing that needs to be done. You know, Coupa is a very user-friendly, user-centric. You know, we're built with the user in mind, you know, kind of an Amazon shopping cart look and feel so that the adoption you get by employees around the company using the, the system is, is really, really high. And the key to success with all your business spend is getting all the activity into the system. So that you is very important. Um, you know, P, Coupa is prescriptive. We, we have nearly $4 trillion of transactions that have occurred in the core of our platform over the years, cumulatively. And we're able to take that data and present it back to customers in ways that can help them make better decisions. And we call that prescriptive, the P for prescriptive. So actionable steps that you can take, like, hey, for example, for this commodity, this SKU, this good, you're spending more per unit than your peers. What should you do? Run a sourcing event, create a catalog, negotiate with the supplier. So we offer prescriptions from our data to our customers to help optimize uh, their business right, and their spending. Um, and then A is accelerated. I touched on it a minute ago. You know, we we know how important it is for companies embarking upon a journey of a partnership with Coupa to have a clear, fast return on their investment, right? Especially in a in a market like this, which is very turbulent, where CFOs are and others within the organization are really trying to prioritize where they want to make investments. So our ability to do a fast implementation and get the customer achieving a strong return on investment quickly is, is the accelerated component of Coupa. All those things, I think, factor into us being the industry leader. Yeah, sounds like a wonderful product. <laughs> so Definitely. <laughs> <laughs> so you've been there now for 10 years. What are your proudest achievements since joining Coupa? Geez, you know, I, I, as kind of a fun story, um, you know, when I came to Coupa, we were on QuickBooks um, and we were... We were decided to move over to NetSuite. Um, so, you know, I became the first uh, financial professional to use Coupa and NetSuite together. Um, and that allowed me to be kind of the guinea pig for all the different integrations we wanted to build. I yeah. really was able to learn the product. Um, and that was, like I said, you know, maybe nine years ago, eight years ago, when we completed that. That was a really great experience. And and then I would say, you know, we had aspirations of becoming a public company. And the first thing you have to do is take all your private company bookkeeping that you've done and get that into a public company shape, right? So that you can report your financial statements um, and you can pass audits, right? Financial statement audits. So probably back in 2014, uh, when we, we got our first audit opinion uh, completed, I have to say that was a, a pretty exciting and proud moment. I mean, the, the amount of work um, across the team here and, and with third-party consultants and uh, with my colleagues that went into reaching that milestone was just a Herculean. You know, when, yeah. when I look back on it, I think, wow, how did we do that? <laughs> but, but once you get the first one under your belt, you know, you've kind of got a good starting point and we, we just built from there. And, and what keeps you there? What keeps me here at Coupa? Yeah. Uh, so many things. I mean. You know, first and foremost, I'd say the culture that we have here. Um, it's a it's a very respectful culture and a very authentic culture. You know, there's not a lot of bureaucracy here at Coupa. Um, my door is wide open, and I I interact every day with people all across different levels and departments in the organization, and that really goes for all the management team here at Coupa. Um, you know, we kind of have a a very our, our core values are ensure customer success focus on results and strive for excellence. And, you know, we f- we focus on results. We we live those core values. A lot of companies, I think, have core values written down because they have to in today's day and age, but they don't actually integrate them into their daily activities. You know, I can say here at Coupa that, uh, you know, one of my main focal points on a daily basis here is to make sure that we're living those as, as a, a kind of steward of the culture here, make sure we are living those those core values in all our meetings, all our interactions, um, even as we've grown from when I started 100 people to now well well over 3,000 colleagues here at Coupa. Um, so the culture is, is really, really important. And then I think you layer into that 
what I would call opportunity, right? <laughs> so we're the cl- clear leader in the space for business spend management. Um, and we're very focused on keeping that lead and retaining that lead. And then on top of that, we have a, a huge total addressable market. Uh, most recently, we shared a 90 plus billion dollar total addressable market. And we're really in our infancy as far as addressing that TAM. Um, so, you know, I, I think the opportunity itself layered on top of the, the, the amazing chemistry and culture that we have is keeps me very, very excited every day. And let's talk about Coupa's IPO in 2016. Can you talk us through when what went into the decision behind the timing, first of all, and, and how did you get ready for that? Yeah, no, great question. So uh, timing wise, you know, I think I think that you have to be at a certain size. We were nearing $200 million in revenue, which was still you know fairly young for a company to go public. But um, for us, we're in the large enterprise software. I mean, we we often sell uh, deals to customers that are in the you know well into the seven figures from an annual contract value perspective. And when you're um, interacting with Fortune 100, Fortune 1000 uh, companies, you know the 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 pedigree or the comfort that comes with you know signing up with a supplier that's public that reports their financial statements publicly, that reports earnings. I think really benefits you in um, ha- having the decision go toward toward Coupa, right? Versus some of the other really large uh, organizations that they've worked with in the past, which have you know uh, good technology, but in our space a bit older technology, right? That was a big factor for us was uh, the strength that it would bring to top line sales being a public company. Um, what went into an IPO? Wow. I mean, everyone uh, talks about that lead up <laughs> to going public. It's it's an incredibly um, meaningful workload, right? That goes all the way to taking your private company financial statements and making them public. But but more importantly than that, you have to have the operational discipline to run your business, meet your you know results from a a top line perspective from a cost perspective you know a forecast perspective to close the books quickly um to not have any hiccups right when you're a public company you've got to be dialed in the timing has to be on point and so you know really for a, for a year plus uh and really intensively for th- 3 to 4 quarters before going public you know we strove to operate as a public company would right and i think um when you dive into that readiness process, you realize how many, I don't want to say holes, but how, how much you need to grow up in various aspects of your business. You know, um, really, really a lot of the back office financial infrastructure that's needed, you kind of you kind of see, you can poke holes in and say, hey, we really need better data here. We need our clothes to be faster. And that requires investment and really a lot of focus from the team. And so, uh, you know, leading up to the IPO, it was... A, a ton of work, um, but it was a very exciting milestone. I, I would say that what a lot of companies or what a lot of individuals that haven't been through it before don't realize is that first year or two, both actually first first couple of years after becoming public are probably equally as challenging, right? Because you're suddenly a public company. Yeah. You have, uh, you have a, a stock program that is now actually being executed where you have employees you know, exercising options and selling RSUs. Um, you're you're doing the actual earnings calls and reports. Uh, you know, so so you know, for those out there that are working toward an IPO, I just I don't want to be the bearer of bad news, but <laughs> <laughs> it's not 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 over once you do the IPO. I think a lot of the focus goes away from certain consultants and other folks, you know, that are permeating around the organization, but it's it's you know, that first couple of years running as a public company is an exciting challenge as well. Yeah, I, I didn't even think of that, but I'm sure that's a huge transition. And, and a lot of learning in the first two years is the how to perform as a public company. Exactly. And and you have, you know, many companies based on the market cap um, have Sarbanes-Oxley requirements that you didn't have as a private company. Um, you know, the planning, when you think about earnings and messaging and financial modeling, goes out further, right? Because you're talking long term with investors. And so um, it's a it's a great learning experience. Um, it's something that you really need to prepare for. I, you know, I recommend 
that you you operate as a public company for about a year, you know, if if not a little bit longer prior to becoming one, including doing mock earnings calls and things like that, because it really helps you get prepared. Yeah, that's great advice. Um, so you recently wrote an article for TechCrunch and you posted on LinkedIn that today's uncertain market environment presents major challenges to high growth businesses, especially those looking to do an IPO. But finance teams can be the anchor in the storm. So what does this mean to you, first of all? And how can companies make sure that they're not only poised to weather the storm, but to be able to grow? Yeah, so I think if I were to boil it down to one word, it would be agility, right? You know, today, as we listen to the news and we have an incredibly dynamic, you know, changing environment from a macro uh, perspective. You, you have war, you have, uh, you know, commodity prices that are increasing, inflation, monetary policy, uh, supply chain issues, right? And and the common theme when you listen to CNBCs and read Wall Street Journal and, and other uh, outlets is that no one really knows exactly what's going to happen, right? And the important thing is that you're able to adapt quickly and I would use the word agility, right? You need to have agility in your business to be able to make decisions and operationalize them quickly, move investments from one place to another. Um, and and really, you know, we're in a time where IPOs have kind of been on pause uh, because of the turbulence in the market, um, depressed multiples that are out there relative to a couple of years ago. Um, a lot of our customers are using this time to to bolster their back office operations. You know, they want to have complete visibility and control over all of their investments into their business so that they can make the right decisions, right? Regarding personnel, regarding top line investments, and also regarding all of their spending with suppliers, who are the critical suppliers, which ones are at risk of going out of business in a, in a potentially down economy. Um, how can I negotiate better pricing for certain uh, commodities or goods or services, which is part of what our solution can help inform you about. Um, you know, we, we've seen CFOs uh, who are on the cusp of doing an IPO but can't do it right now, using this opportunity to get all those back office, all that back office infrastructure really dialed in. And, and it goes back to the, the work that led into the IPO and your previous question, um, really enhance your ability to operate as a public company. And and then as time goes on, you know, companies will invest in growth to the degree that the demand allows for it. Um, in other scenarios, they may want to optimize profitability uh, because demand is down. If we, for example, if we enter into a more severe recession, but I think as we sit here today, no one really knows where we're headed. So optimizing that agility, right, having the pieces in place so that you can navigate uh, these this turbulent environment. Uh, with whatever it may bring, whichever direction it may go, is really the key. Yeah, it's it's uh, definitely a turbulent environment. I thought coming out of COVID, we might see some normalcy, but it seems like, you know, it's well one storm after another. Yeah, I mean, I think that, um, you know, looking back in the rearview mirror, you can kind of see it play out. You know, there was uh, unprecedented levels of of participation, liquidity, interest rate uh, reductions from, you know, for example, the U.S. Fed and monetary policymakers around the world. And now that's being unwound, you know, that obviously created a high inflationary environment. And so, you know, for growth companies, when the cost of capital increases, it creates it creates pressure on on equity markets. Um, and, and really, that's been pretty broad. You know, I'm, I'm hopeful uh, right now we're in a period of a bit of a bounce. I know that S&P 500 is up about 15% over the last kind of month and a half. Um, but once again, I think it's 50-50 if you, if you talk to uh, true you know, seasoned economists, let alone uh, you know, I'm, I'm just one opinion as to whether it's a kind of a bear market bounce or this is really a new kind of floor that, that is stable that people can work off of. Um, so there's tons of turbulence out there. And I think uh, you know, obviously the war in Ukraine, geopolitical issues with with China and, and the U.S. and Taiwan being a recent example, supply chain issues, right? Costs going up with inflation and, and kind of the Fed and monetary policymakers trying to mitigate that. There's so much 
that we yet don't know about how it's going to play out, right? Is it going to be a soft landing? Is it going to be a recession? Um, so we just have to wait and see. But one thing I can I can be sure of is we're going to be ready one way or another. <laughs> and let's talk about disp- disparate systems. Lots of companies operate with systems that don't really talk to each other. So let's talk about the importance of unifying those systems. Yeah, I mean, we we talk often with our customers about silos, right? And how they're currently operating the procurement team, the finance team, the accounting team, the uh, supply chain team in a silo. Um, you know, and that that really leaves a lot of efficiency, productivity, you know, uh, to, to, <laughs> that's getting wasted um, that doesn't need to be wasted. And, and we're in a period of time where optimizing your operating margins, your gross margins, your free cash flow margins, and your profitability is a really keen focus for investors, right? For, for companies to perform well in capital markets. Um, and so, you know, one, one simple example I can give you is uh, procurement teams and, and the rest of the organization. I mean, a lot of the companies we, we work with have these incredible uh, sourcing and procurement leaders and teams that go out and negotiate incredible rates for their for their supplier contracts for anything from computer equipment all the way to like materials or uh, raw minerals things like that but what happens is those contracts often go into a closet or into a sit in someone's email inbox or they go to a shared server somewhere and the rest of the organization doesn't know they exist they they can't access that pricing they don't know about it. They don't know how to execute on that pricing, or they don't even know it's it's there. Um, so one of the unsiloing processes we have at Coupa is, you know, when we negotiate a contract for you know, or a customer of ours use, uses Coupa to negotiate great pricing for a contract, they can put that pricing into the system. Coupa is one one cloud instance uh, platform that sits on top of. We typically see many, many different ERP instances within a, an enterprise company. And all the employees who need that, that laptop or that screen or who need uh, that machine right for their, for their lab, um, when they go type it into Coupa, they can see the pricing that, that has been negotiated there and they can take advantage of it. And that, that benefits a company's bottom line. You know, that's just one small example. You know, we see um, for Coupa deployed companies, procurement, supply chain, accounts payable, finance, all the way to the closing of the books, FP&A, all working really uh, with a very kind of symbiotic information, data, all working as one to optimize the output for the company. And, you know, when you have a lot of older on-prem systems or manual processes, emails, kind of the, the way things used to be done, a lot of that gets lost, right? And there's a lot of productivity that, that is not taken advantage of and, and inefficiency and really cost that, that gets burned. Yeah, and let's talk about what an effective finance team looks like. Yeah, I mean, uh, I think in today's day and age, an effective finance team is spending most of their time on, uh, on work, analytical work or operational work that can really optimize the results of the business. You know, um, there are so many systems now um, you could go all the way to extreme of even RPA, right? In in some cases, um, but certainly like a Coupa, a Salesforce, uh, many others, Workday. Um, so many systems now that can help automate so much of the process. For example, with Coupa, you know, instead of a supplier emailing a a purchase order to someone on the team and then having that person type it into an ERP system, you know, that person's whole job becomes data entry. If the supplier enters the purchase requisition through the system, it's already pre-populated and it can just be approved or rejected or questions can be asked. Um, and that really frees up bandwidth for the team to work on, you know, other things that are more important to the business. You know, in, in finance, I can think of analysis, financial analysis. Um, I, can, I can think of, you know, sales-related analysis. Um, so many, so many different aspects uh, where you would rather have your your folks working on more value add areas than working on kind of old cumbersome data entry type things. And um, you know, it's amazing. We still see so much paper, manual process, a lot of really cumbersome work that is should be should be done 
automatically now in a digital way. So I think I think one of the one of the keys is to optimize for digitization, right? And to allow your team, uh, none of us have unlimited resources, right? To, to use your resources toward optimizing the business. And there are, there are many other things as well. I mean, I think making sure to have clear, clear uh, objectives and focusing on those results every quarter. Um, for us, you know, we've done, all, we've done uh, mergers and acquisitions, having the team be ready for those, having playbooks for those. I could think of a hundred things that a, a best in class organization would do. But with digitization, you can really focus on speed, accuracy, and really execution, right? And I think that's a key key focal point for CFOs now. And you mentioned this before, but to, to be effective, um, things have to be running through the system. So as companies implement new tools, how what's your advice for getting people to adopt those tools? <laughs> Yeah, I mean, the, the first thing I'd say is select a, a tool or a solution that is user-friendly, right? Um, <laughs> we like to pride that you and Coupa that, that it's very user-centric, uh, the way it was built. Because whenever something is hard, cumbersome, painful, slow, you know, your employees, they have to get their job done. So they're going to try to find a way to get it done, even if it means going around the system. So that's number one. The second thing I'd say is, you know, enforcement is kind of a draconian word to use for it. But if all levels of the organization, all the way up to the CEO are, you know, or in Coupa's case, uh, we we have a, an upside down org chart, right? We like to say that we support um, those individuals on our teams uh, all the way down to the CEO. <laughs> um, you, you know, enforcement through uh, example, uh, I think is is key. Um, if everyone in the company, including the leadership team, is using the solution, uh, you know, there really aren't any excuses for others in the organization to not be using it. That's great advice. So as you look at your own team, what's one of the biggest challenges that you guys are facing this quarter or let's say the rest of 2022? Yeah, I mean, you know, scale is, has always been, I've said for many, many years, my primary focal point. You know, we're a growth company. Um, we have been ever since I've been here at Coupa, really a hyper growth company. Uh, we've gone from, you know, when I joined 100 folks to more than 3,000 uh, colleagues here at Coupa. And we've gone from having a, a US operation only, right, 10 years ago to having a 25% of our sales be in or, or so, give or take, in, in EMEA. We have operations in Asia and, and broader. APAC, Japan, we have Latin American operations and sales. And so, you know, how do we continue to meet the needs of this growing business through scale? And uh, one of the traps you can fall into is just adding people, right? You can, it, you have to add people, but to what degree? Is, is throwing people at the problem kind of the, the right scalable solution? And that's where we often uh, see opportunity to invest in technology, right? Um, where whether it's you know our own usage of Coupa, but many other areas of technology that can help automate uh, processes uh, so that it's not not so labor intensive for folks. But but really broadly, you know, running a business with a hundred employees versus three plus thousand employees, it's a different ball game. And um, going from you know we had you know when I started probably twenty million dollars of revenue to you know, this year we we guided to somewhere in the eight hundred plus million dollar range for revenue um, on our recent earnings call. There's a lot of scale that comes into that, and at, at every turn, when you kind of think you got it licked, there's another challenge at the <laughs> that's that's right in front of you that you have to focus on. So, so you know, that's one of the biggest things. Of course, in this market environment that we're in as well, you know, from an from a investment perspective, that's another. Uh, area of focus is what, you know, we're investing in, in growth and profitability for our company and, and growing the business, the market. What are the best places to make those investments? Um, you know, especially given the backdrop of all the turbulence in the market, that's another focal area. And as a technology company, what investments are you making in technology? <laughs> oh, uh, you know, I, I can call out a, a one or two examples. Um, certainly within Salesforce, you know, there are a lot of different um, kind of kind of plug-in or add-on solutions that we've used to get additional data, 
to help make better decisions, to help qualify customers. Uh, that's one. Um, you know, there's a solution that we use called Clary, uh, who is, you know, which is really helpful with us for forecasting and for managing our deal flow. Um, so, there, you know, there's there's too many to name. Um, you know, there there's a solution called Xylo uh, that we recently introduced. I'm just giving you a few examples, mm-hmm. just probably two or three out of 100, um, which helps us kind of understand all the different SaaS investments that we've made, all the different solutions that we're using, and which ones do we do we actually use? Which ones do we not need? You know, many, many, many different ones. NetSuite is, of course, um, our ERP and has been great uh, as far as running our business uh, from an ERP perspective and financial reporting. Um, really, you know, anything that can really help us optimize the top line and the bottom line from an operational perspective. Those are our areas that we focus on for investment. Just curious, do you see a day where you're, you'll outgrow NetSuite or is that a product mm-hmm. that can grow with you unlimited? You know, it's possible. I think that, um, uh, you know, we're, we're a software company, right? So we don't have a lot of heavy manufacturing. Uh, we're all, you know, we don't have any manufacturing. <laughs> <laughs> um, we, we are also... Um, you know, from a volume perspective, we tend to do large enterprise deals and large mid-market and, and corporate size deals um, versus a company that may have a million consumer transactions per day or per hour, <laughs> right? And so, um, I look, I think we can go a long way with NetSuite. I, you know, never say never. I mean, there could get to a point where we outgrow it, but I don't see that happening for, for many, many years. And last question, just taking a look at the talent market at the moment, what are you guys doing to attract and retain the best and the brightest? Yeah, you know, it's a great question. I I think that um, first and foremost, you know, I talked about I talked about Coupa being a clear leader in in this space, right? I, I pointed out four big verticals, and all companies are addressing these areas: CRM, HCM business spend management, BSM, and ERP. Um, and in our space, you know, we're we're the clear leader and, and we continue to build upon that lead. And I think that helps us attract talent, right? When you, you're coming to a place where you have the best solution in the market, it makes you more confident in selling it, right? Um, the, the second thing is we have a massive total addressable market and it's still relatively untapped. So... Um, you know, the word I would summarize those two points is opportunity. There's a lot of opportunity for folks that come to Coupa from a, a business perspective and from a, you know, we, we like to say Coupa is a platform for both personal and professional development for our colleagues. A lot of opportunity here. It's a very meritocratic environment and the business has a lot of opportunity. And then I, I think, you know, look, we have a culture that I mentioned earlier of, of authenticity, respect. There's not a lot of bureaucracy here at Coupa. I think it's a very modern culture. That's that's a, an arrow in our quiver as well. Yeah. And we're making investments. You know, we're investing meaningfully in career opportunities and talent development. Um, we recently, you know, raised salaries for a, a broad swath of our employees. You know, a lot of that due to inflation uh, that employees are seeing. You know, we're really building a destination company where people want to stay, grow, and build together. So, communicating in that message um, to to prospective employees and really helping them understand what we're doing here, I think, is you know really helps us attract top talent. Yeah, definitely sounds like a great message, Tony. Thank you so much for being my guest today. Thank you very much. It was great to be here and, and wonderful conversation. Thank you. Yeah, I really enjoyed speaking with you. It's been fun. I I wish you and Coupa Software all the best. And to our listeners, please tune in next week. And until then, take care. If you're ready to boost efficiency and streamline your accounting processes at significant cost savings, it's time to talk with Personiv. Their people-powered solutions have transformed the delivery of back office tasks and general accounting functions for decades, partnering with clients to provide everything from accounts payable to payroll services. See what Personiv can do for you by visiting personiv.com. You've been listening to CFO Weekly presented by Personiv. Please subscribe wherever you get your podcasts to hear all of our episodes. Want to learn more? Check out personiv.com. Thanks for listening.